in this video, which is the third and final video about the decoder, the main objective is to learn about the encoder-decoder self-attention layers, which is where we incorporate information from the encoder into the decoder. The encoder-decoder that we study in this video is the second self-attention layer in the decoder. It takes two matrices as input, where the first, here denoted capital XD, is provided by the earlier layers in the decoder, and the second, here denoted capital XE, is the output from the encoder. Now, the number of column vectors in these matrices is not necessarily the same, since the number of vectors in capital XD, here denoted ND, is determined by the number of vectors feed it into the decoder, whereas the number of column vectors in the output from the encoder, xe, here denoted ne, is determined by the length of the sequences feed it into the encoder, which is also the length of the sequence that we want to translate. As we mentioned in the previous video, the output from all layers in the decoder has the same number of vectors as the input to the first self-attention layer in the decoder. The output vectors from all layers also have the same length as the input to the first self-attention layer. Consequently, the output from the encoder-decoder layer is another matrix, here denoted capital Y, of the same size as capital XD, that is, DD times ND. Even though it takes two matrices as input, it therefore still outputs one vector for each input vector to the entire decoder layer, and the dimensions of the output from the encoder does not influence the dimensions of Y. Like I said, it's finally time to make use of the vectors computed by the encoder. Let us illustrate how the encoder-decoder self-attention works using a simple example. Suppose the input sequence to the encoder is Tengo un coche. In that case, the encoder takes three vectors as input and therefore also outputs three vectors. We here denote these output vectors as X1E, X2E and X3E, where capital E stands for encoder. Suppose now that the output sequence that we feed as input to the decoder is longer than three and that we would like to compute a new word embedding for the fourth word in that sequence. This is how an encoder-decoder self-attention layer would do this. It first computes a query vector Q4. It does so by multiplying a matrix WQ by X4D, where X4D denotes the fourth vector in the matrix capital XD, provided by earlier layers in the decoder. That is, X4D is the current embedding of the fourth word, according to the decoder. It then computes key and value vectors for each vector provided by the encoder. Since the output from the encoder contains three vectors, we compute three key and value vectors, regardless of the number of vectors that the decoder has received as input. After this, we proceed as usual, which means that we compute weights by taking the inner product between key and query vectors and divide by the square root of d, where d is the length of the key and query vectors, and then we take the softmax. Finally, we compute the weighted average of the value vectors. Please note that we are taking a weighted average of value vectors that are determined by the output from the encoder. This means that regardless of how amazing the current word embeddings in the decoder are, they can only influence the weights that we use when computing the average of these value vectors. It's possible to express the involved operations elegantly using matrices. As a first step, we collect the vectors received from the encoder and the earlier layers in the decoder in the matrices capital XE and capital XD. As usual, the self-attention layer uses weight matrices WQ, WK, and WV to compute queries, keys, and values. The main difference compared to conventional self-attention 
is that we only use the matrix XD to form the decoder queries, whereas keys and values are computed using the encoder output capital XE. Given these matrices, we proceed as usual and compute weights by taking capital K transpose Q divided by the square root of D followed by softmax. Finally, we compute the output embeddings by taking capital V times W, which means that we are taking a weighted average of the value vectors in capital V. A few things are worth mentioning. First, we can confirm that the number of output vectors is the same as the number of query vectors, which is ND. This makes sense because this means that we output one vector for each input token that the decoder receives. Second, the value vectors are determined by the output from the encoder, as well as the matrix WV. This means that the vectors in capital V that we are averaging do not depend on the embeddings in capital XD. Third, the embeddings in capital XD instead only influence the output capital Y via the weight matrix capital W. Finally, we also note that the weights are not masked. The reason for that is that we don't need to mask them since the word embedding for token number i anyway only depends on xid and the output from the encoder capital XE. That is, even though we don't use a mask, yi still does not depend on later inputs to the decoder. We have now learned about encoder-decoder self-attention, and the decoder then combines h of these into the encoder-decoder multi-head self-attention layers. The overall structure of the multi-head attention layer is still the same as in the encoder, where we first concatenate the different Y matrices computed by the different heads before multiplying the resulting matrix with a matrix capital WO to obtain the output Y. In this case, the difference is that the output YI from the different self-attention heads now use capital XD to compute the queries and capital XE to compute keys and values. We have now learned about the encoder-decoder multi-head self-attention layer used to incorporate information from the encoder into the decoder. As you can see, apart from the two multi-head self-attention layers, a single decoder block also contains a feed-forward layer as well as three residual connections where we also normalize the embeddings. The complete decoder layer contains capital N of these decoder blocks, where all blocks have the same structure but different parameters. The output from the final decoder block is then fed into a linear layer followed by a softmax in order to compute output probabilities. During training, we can compute probabilities for all input words, which enables us to parallelize computations and speed up training which is an advantage compared to recurrent neural networks. This concludes the videos about the decoder, and it also concludes the videos about the transformer architecture. I hope that you now have a reasonable understanding of this architecture and all of its components.